So today I'm going to focus on arrays and how they work inside of loops. So as you read in Zybooks, you can use loops to input values into arrays. First, I'm going to declare an array. I'm going to declare a string array, and I want to name it colors. I put my brackets at, after the name of the array. You could put it after the variable type. I always put it after uh, the name. doesn't really matter. I'm going to set this equal to new string, and I want three indices in my array. So that's going to start at zero and count one, two. It will not include index three because the index counting starts at zero. Now I want my loop to input values um, from user. So I need a scanner object. And I need to import okay that's loop to use when inputting arrays is a for loop and if you remember for loops you start with the keyword for and inside of the parentheses you need to uh, declare a counter variable an int um, I'm going to call my counter i and set it equal to zero because that is the first index that we will be using in the array. And then we don't want i to go above the number of indexes inside of the colors array, which is three. Now I could say i needs to be less than three, but a better way to do this would be the length method of arrays. I access this by um, indicating the name of the array and then length. This is a method that returns the number of indexes that are in said array. This colors.length will return three because we set this array to have three indexes. Now remember, we don't want i to be great, less than or equal to colors.length because once it's equal to three, that means it is no longer within indexes of this array because the array is index 0, 1, and 2. It is not 3, so i does not need to equal 3. It needs to always be less than 3 um, for this loop to count. And then we have the incrementer. I like to leave comments next to all of my brackets so that I don't get confused. First, we want to prompt the user to, that print, to enter a color. I used um, dot print instead of dot print line because I want the, the input of the user to be on the same line as this statement. Now, you read in Zybooks that the way to call a certain index of an array is to have the array name with square brackets and a certain index number on the inside. Now, within any time of this loop, we want to be talking about the index number represented by i. So we want i to be inside of these square brackets. So this way, the first time the loop happens, we are going to be talking about index zero of colors and then the second time we're going to be talking about index one and then the third time we will be fulfilling index two and that will cause the loop to exit because that will be all of the indexes in the loop now we're going to set this um, value equal to the scanner um, And this will cause, this loop will cause the user to input three different colors to go inside of this strings array. Let's save this and execute. You see in the console here, it tells me to enter a color like I prompted the loop to say. I'm going to insert blue, and then I'm going to insert purple, and then I'm going to insert yellow. 
So now my array has blue at index zero, yellow at index one, and oh, purple at index one, and yellow at index two. We can also use for loops to print these colors in the same way that we put the values into this array. So I'm going to create another for loop with the exact same uh, components to the loop as I did the first time. I want an incrementer that starts at zero. Then I do not want this loop to exceed the number of indexes there are. So I'm going to use colors.length. And then, of course, I need an incrementer um, to cause the next iteration of the loop to happen. So first, I want to create a new variable. I'm going to call this color. And I want to set this equal to the current uh, index value of the colors array. So I'm again going to call the colors array and current index value, which is found within the variable i. The first time this loop runs, this color will be set to the first value within the colors array, which in my previous example was blue. And this will change each time the loop is run as it goes to index one and index two. Next, I want to write a message that prints out this color. The label. And then I'm going to concatenate this color. Now let's trace through what this loop does. It creates a string this color and sets it equal to the current um, index value of the colors array. For the first iteration of this loop, it will go to colors index zero. And in my past example, this was blue. So for the first time this loop runs, this color will equal blue. That's essentially what this line is stating. Next, it will print out color and the value that is currently stored in this color, which is blue. Next, we'll go increase i, and now we are focusing on the number one index in the colors array. So this color will be reassigned to purple because purple is at index one in the colors array. Then color colon purple will be printed. And the same thing will happen with index two. This color will be assigned to the value at index two, which was yellow. And this color or this next line will print color colon yellow. This string uh, variable is being reset every time this loop continues and it's getting a new value, which will continuously be changing as this i is incremented at the end of each loop. Again, like Dr. Agar said, imagine this plus plus i is happening at the end of this loop. So every time the loop ends, um, i is being incremented to one extra number and we are moving on to the next index in the array. Now let's save this and run it and see if it executes like this. First, it'll execute this for loop and asking me to input colors. I'm going to input blue as my first one and then purple, and then yellow. I forgot to write, um, I forgot to print these all on separate lines, so let me go back and edit. Save, Let's try that again. I want blue, purple, yellow. Now, this loop executed asking me to insert my colors, and then my second loop executed printing out all of my colors. And as we predicted, 
color with all of the different colors have been printed. Now I'm going to delete this. I want to create a new array of int variables. Int, let's call this array digits. Don't forget the square brackets. Now I'm going to hard code the values of this array into my code instead of creating a loop that allows user input. I'm going to use my curly braces. I want 10, 27, 98, 17, 21. So now digits has one, two, three, four, five indexes. However, it starts at zero, so this last index is index four. Now I want to show you how to use this for loop to find the maximum and minimum of this array. Now we can find the maximum value in this array by comparing one number to another, and we would have to compare all the numbers to each other. We can do this step by step by comparing the first number to the second number and deciding the greatest of those two, then taking the greatest of those two and comparing it to the next number and deciding the greatest of those two, on so on and so forth. And it looks like this. Here I have a chart to display um, the numbers in the array next to the index that they are assigned to. In the array that we created, we put 10 as the first number, so it has um, index 0, 1, index 1 is 27, index 2 is 98, so on and so forth. Now, when we first start comparing, we have to take the first number as the maximum as there was no other comparison to have. So our current maximum is 10. Now, we need to compare the first number to the second number and decide the greatest of these two. Now, clearly, 27 is the larger of the two numbers. So now, after comparing these, our current maximum is 27. Now, we go on to compare 27 to 98. Clearly, 98 is much larger than 27, so our current maximum our current maximum changes to 98. And then we go on to compare 98 to 17. 98 is still our current maximum, so it does not change. And then we compare 98 to 21. Again, 98 is our maximum, and so it does not change. What we just did was a list of steps that we repeated over and over again, meaning we did a loop. Now, we create a variable to store our current maximum, which would be at first, first value of the digits array. So we would set max to equal digits at array at index zero. And then we create a for loop, same as before, int i equals zero, because we're starting at zero. And then we do not want i. So if we come back to our illustration, we can see that our first step was setting the current max, which at first was the value at index zero. And we did this by creating that integer named max and setting it to digits at index zero. Our next step was comparing the first um, value to the second value and then deciding which one was greater. If it was greater, then we changed the current max can be done with an if statement. You heard I said if one the second number is greater than the first then we will change the current max. So we would do if the value at index i is greater than the current max and we would change the value of our current max to equal the value of digits at index i. Again, this if statement is comparing our current max to the value at index i in the array digits, and then it will change the current max if that value is larger. And this loop will run for each value in the array until the last index is reached. So just to make sure this works, 
after the loop is finished, let's print out maximum value. I am going to comment all of this out so that we don't have to enter those colors again. Save and execute. As you can see, this loop ran and it found the current, the maximum value to be 98 at the end. Now this exact same concept stands for the minimum. We can just create another value variable called minimum. These two variables have nothing to do with each other. They both have to start with the first variable in the array to compare to the next. Um, they will not interfere with each other. They will be running separately. However, they can be within this array and we just create another if statement to compare digits at index i to our current minimum. If this digit if the digits at index i is less than the current minimum, then we need to alter the minimum to equal digits i, just as we did with maximum. And then to check, Let's save, run that, and it shows us that the minimum value is 10. If you don't understand how this loop is executing, go back to our illustration and track each number and where it goes compared to the current maximum. Lastly, I want to discuss how to swap values in an array. Going back to our illustration, let's say I want to switch the value of the first index with the value of the last index. I could just set the first index equal to the last index, which would change the first index to 21, and then I could set the last index to the first one. However, this poses a problem because the value of the first one is now the same as the last one, so we really aren't switching anything, we're just changing them to the same value. To combat this, we can hold the value of the first one in a temporary variable before um, changing its value. We can do this by declaring it temporary and then setting this variable equal to the value of the first one. Then we change the value of the first index to equal the value of the last index, which changes index 0 to 21. And then we change the value of the last index to equal the value of our temporary variable, which is the original value of our first index. Going through that one more time, we would create a temporary variable called temporary, and it will temporarily hold the value of the first index while we are manipulating some other variables. Then we change the value of the first index to match the value of the last index, which alters this to 21. And then we change the value of the last index to equal the value of our temporary index, which holds the original value of our first index. And so now these two places have been swapped. We can duplicate this process in our Java code by creating int temporary and setting, setting it equal to first value of our digits index, which is digit zero. That holds the value while we manipulate the other variables. Now we can set first value equal to the last one. And the last one equal to our temporary value. We can make sure this happened by printing out 
value of our first We can check this by printing out the value of our first index and our last one. Let's run this code. Twenty one and ten. This shows that our first value in the array has been changed to 21 and our last value in the array has been changed to 10. Now I want to show you that inside of these brackets you do not have to hard code a number. If you wanted the last index of this array but didn't know exactly what it was, you can easily use the dot length method and subtract one to make sure you get the last actual index and not just the length of the array. You can do digits dot length minus one and you can do that everywhere we hard quoted four and two save and it would run the same remember four was the last index of the array and another way to get the last index of the array is to find the length and subtract one Inside these brackets, you can really put any uh, algorithmic expression. If you had a different variable and you wanted to manipulate it to find the index of the array in question, you could also put that inside of these brackets. This is just one of the more common ways to use um, algebraic expressions inside of these brackets.